we came down to the point where we wanted to find the slope of a tangent line. We had this function. The temperature was 200 plus 4 times dial setting squared. And we realized, we found that if the dial setting were exactly 5, then we would get the desired temperature, which was 300 degrees Celsius. But we wanted to see how sensitive it was. And we know from that previous memo that the crucial number we'd like to know is the slope of the tangent line. That if we just get that one number, then we're good. Now, there's other ways to, to solve this problem. And it might seem like this is a very roundabout way. But we're just going to discover that this, once we, we understand more about it, it's going to be a very good and quick way to do this kind of thing. So, I want the slope of the tangent line, that's abbreviation for tangent, uh, to t equals f of x at x equals 5. And you guys got that looking at some data. One way was to bracket the data and take a secant line. And that's usually just going to be an approximation. Surprisingly, it's going to turn out that that is a lucky right answer for our problem. But usually that's just going to be an approximation, and we'd like to get an exact answer. The other strategy that we had was to, let's say, pick 5 as the base point and take a bunch of secant lines with a bunch of different delta x's that you're getting closer and closer to. Okay? So I want to show you uh, that process. So for example, if I did, um, if I made a little table, x and t, well, 5 gets us 300. And then let's say 5.1 gets us T of 5.1 is 200 plus 4 times 5.1 squared, which is 200 plus 4 times, let's see, 26.01. Yep. And that's a 200 plus... 104.04 or 304.04. And then what do we do with those numbers? We take the difference of these guys, which we can call delta t. That's a change in t. And usually it's a small change in t that you want to think of. It's usually, it means change, but often it's a small change. And that's delta x, the small change in x that we chose. And what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to take rise over run, the slope of that secant line. So we're going to take delta t over delta x is 304.04 minus 300 over 5.1 minus 5.0. That's 4.04 over 0.1. That's 40.04. It's suggestive of maybe that's the right answer. Because we've had this phenomenon that sometimes the right answer is actually a surprisingly simple number. And we're going to see that, in fact, that's what we're going to get for the exact answer. So all we need to do here, the beautiful thing is all we need to do here is in place of these two guys, we just need to put in letters. And we're going to end up with something that we can take a limit of. Because what's the process we really want to do? We want to do 5.01, 5.001, 5.0001. Get these numbers and see what the trend is. That's what we've been doing for a while, and we know that now the official way to say that is taking a limit. So let's do that. I don't have a lot of room, but I can erase this. Um, and let's yeah. So let's see what I'm going to do here is instead of all these different random numbers, a lot of laborious calculation with a calculator, I'm going to be able to do this without calculator at all. I'm just going to put in, let's say, uh, I'm going to call this A. Actually, no, I'm going to leave that as fine. We're going to make a letter for that pretty soon, but let's, let's not overcomplicate things. Let's say that's fine. And I'm just going to put in X. 
It's a pretty good letter. And we're calling it X already. And then T, what am I going to put in here? Well, the only thing I can put in is just the master formula for any X. That's what, really what I was putting in here. It's just I happen to actually have the number available to, to, to simplify it. This is just that exact same thing. Now I'm going to take the delta T. I don't want to erase that. The delta T between these two guys. And the delta X between 5 and a variable X. So delta T over delta X is going to be 200 plus 4X squared. Remember, that's just summarizing all of those numbers we could have put in this table. That's all it's doing. It's really exactly what we've been doing before. Minus the 300, which is what happens if you just plug in the base point value, the 5, divided by x minus 5. Okay, now what were we doing with that? Here, we went ahead, we had numbers, and so we could go ahead and simplify and get a number, but we knew that that wasn't really the answer we were really looking for. It was an approximate answer, because it was still a secant slope, not a tangent slope. What we were going to do with it is calculate a bunch of these numbers, based on all the things in the table we could have put in, and take the trend. In other words, take the limit. So what we want to do is we want to take the limit of delta t over delta x. As what? Well, as x goes, it approaches 5. As x approaches 5. Now, one thing we really should do, be doing in this table, if we were being really careful, is put in 4.9, 4.99, 4.999, take a two-sided limit. It turns out that this is going to be very easy to do two-sided automatically. Another reason why this is just better, even though it's a little more sophisticated. So that's going to be the limit, as x goes to 5, of this whole dude. And that, it's a dude. That's a technical math term. Actually, the technical math term is it's called a difference quotient. A difference over a difference. A quotient of differences. It's called a difference quotient. And so this is one of the, that's one of the terminologies you hear a lot for this kind of process for taking the tangent slope. So... Two things to note about this. One is, it's just formalizing exactly what we've been doing since about the third day of class, when we started talking about Scooter and his velocity and stuff like that. You're taking two y values, one of which has a lot of different possibilities to it. And we did that first numerical table, but now we're putting it in terms of algebra. That's a huge step. And then, so difference of y values over difference of x values. And then we're looking at the trend as that difference of x values is purposely made smaller and smaller to focus in on what's happening, like zoom in on the calculator kind of thing. Okay, so now, I think I can put it over here. Let's simplify. It's the limit as x goes to 5. Uh, I get uh, 4x squared minus 100, and I'm going to factor out a 4. Pause and rewind if you want to figure out that algebra. It's not hard. 200 minus 300 is minus 100, and then it factored out of 4. Hey, guess what factors out of here, guys? I should have jumped the gun, though. If I've got a limit of a quotient, the first thing I'm supposed to do is to check whether it's even difficult. Why can't I just plug in 5? Oh, because the bottom goes to 0. Oh, maybe the whole thing goes to plus or minus infinity, then. That's one of our possibilities. Oh, no. Because if I plug in 5 here, it goes to 0. And that's not, not, not a coincidence. The whole point is that this picture is getting to be a smaller and smaller triangle of the delta x of the delta t over delta x. In this case, when we're doing difference quotients to find slopes, it's always going to be the 0 over 0 case. Because you're always getting a very small change in y over a very small change in x. Always. So you've got, that's why we did so much factor cancel. So let's go ahead and do it. Now, nothing's hard. The bottom is 1. You just, you just plug in x equals 5, and that's 4. Exactly. So our guess that 40 was the magic number is exactly correct. So that's one way to do it. It's a very good way to do it.
The book uh, in the, the section that you're doing a little homework on, this is pretty much the first way that they do it, although this exact notation they don't bring in until a little later. But, it's, but it's, it's pretty much how they're doing it. Let me do it in a slightly different way, though. There's another way to set it up in terms of the, the notation in the algebra that's just as good, and it's nice to have familiarity with both. Let's say, say one student set this up and had this clever idea that they can make this a letter. Whenever you plug in the same number over and over again, that's when you want it to be a letter. That's what variables are for. Um, but suppose we wanted to think about it in a different way. Um, we might want to, another student might say, I don't want to think about x so much. I want to think about the difference. I want it all in terms of delta x. I want that to be my fundamental letter. And there's a very easy way to do that. Is to say, instead of putting x down here, say, look, if delta x is my fundamental quantity of interest, I'm just going to call this 5 plus delta x. Focusing on the difference, focusing on like the 0.1 here instead of the 5.1. That's going to be my star of the, of the new way of doing it. Everything's going to be in terms of that delta x. It's often called h as well. Let me check the time on the video here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this video and, and do a continuation because I think I'm going to go over 15 if I, if I keep going uh, with the whole thing. So that's a preview of the next one. We're going to rewrite it focusing on delta x instead of x itself.